So last week we looked at Vertex painting in Nomad. This is Forger, this is the one I started with on the iPad. And what we're gonna look at this week is something that really uh, matters to all of you with your, your painting in iPad Sculpting, and that's using and making UVs inside an iPad Sculpting app. So let's dive in and take a look what we've got. Okay, so I'm hoping that you've watched last week's video with Nomad. This is obviously Forger, as I've already said. Now, the difference with Forger and Nomad in their current state, one of the big ones, is what I'm about to show you. So by now, you should understand that if you're painting with vertex colours, you can't use that in the way that you would expect with textures. So... If you're in Nomad, you can export those out exactly as shown in that video, and you can see it up here, Now I'll link it for you. Uh, if you want that to be UV'd or UV unwrapped, and you want a texture on it, you're having to do it externally from Nomad. Now with Forger, it's a little bit different. So I've got a sphere loaded in, a simple, simple sphere. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna work through a couple of little exercises to show you why it's different in here. So first of all, um, if you don't know what I'm doing in some of these, I'm not going to go all the way down to the basics now. So go back to our earlier videos, some of the basic videos, and, and, you, and you, you'll be able to follow along at a, a later date. But with the sphere, what I want to do is go to Mesh, and I'm going to remesh it. And that's because I want completely clean, um, sub basically a completely clean mesh with, with quite lowish sort of polygon count so I'm just going to go 35 and hit remesh and see what I get can't see anything because if we hit down here at the bottom and put wireframe on now you'll see so what I've got now is a, a remesh sphere uh, bear in mind I've still got symmetry on so we can just just prove that a little bit we can just move that around so if we've sculpted a head and symmetrically there you go you've, you've remeshed it but you've got the, uh, the the symmetry on but now we want to paint on it. Now if you remember from last week's um, vertex painting lesson, when you go to colour and now start painting on it, it's painting between the points. Now again, refer back to that video if you don't know what I'm talking about here. So um, we'll just paint along like that and we'll just do another colour just to make absolutely sure exactly as we did last week and we've got two colours on it. So. If I want that out now as a model with these vertex colors, it's simple. So I'll come all the way back up and we go export 3D model and we just export it out uh, as an OBJ. And that, that will be fine. That would have vertex colors. But we don't want to do that. What we want to do is make a texture map. So before we do that, then let's try and just do exactly what I've just done, which is export a texture map. So I hit it. I say sphere, give it a file name. Sphere, PNG I should have hit first actually. Now Sphere, do I want to export vertex colors? No. And then export, hit the button and here you go. So you can't export vertex colors. The mesh being exported has no UVs. Import or create automatic ones and try again. So what does that mean? So what that means is we don't have any coordinates mapped to this model. And this is exactly where you're at with Nomad currently. I'm sure we're gonna get that in the future but we can do something else in here so we go back up to the top and we go mesh and then down here at the bottom right the farthest icon is this one and you've got auto retop close holes generate automatic uvs import uvs from an, an obj and mesh projection so the one we're going to look at today is generate automatic uvs so if i now hit that and it says UV remapping successful, mesh updated with new UVs. So hit OK. Now we can try and export. So go back out again. Let's do texture. We know what we're calling it. We'll pick the PNG first. PNG is good because it, it has a transparency. Uh, we don't need it for this, but it's, it's a good file. It's a good file format for this sort of stuff. Ball 2. We just want the sphere. We don't want the vertex colors and we'll just export it. 
I'll just save it in my photo library so I can I can show you without having to do anything. Okay, so how can we have a look at that? So now just switch over to my photo library. I've done a few of the models already. And if you look here, that's what we get. So it's broken the model down into uh, all these different parts. The UVs are not brilliant, I have to say. They're, they're, they're good enough and they're choppy. They're like automated ones in, in ZBrush. But what it has done is it's given us a texture map and we can now use that in another program. We can even re-UV it in another, another program again. So if you're going into Blender, you're in a good place now with this. Okay, let's switch back. Okay, so that's one, one thing we can do. So let's open up some models and just see what, what we've got to, to play with. So I've got some models that I've, I've created either in here or in, in, in other programs. So I'll go back to the top. Let's have a look. at. I don't want to save that sphere. Let's have a look, first of all, at this guy. So this is a tarantula. Um, the scene took longer to load. I think we're running out of RAM, so I might flush it in a moment. Uh, turn the wireframe off. So this is a tarantula that I brought in. I think it originally started in Gravity Sketch in VR, I think. I can't remember. But it's fairly low resolution, and it came in with good UVs and a texture map. So what you're seeing there is actually a texture map. I just wanted to work on it in, in Forger at the time. So um, this is quite an intact model. So realistically, it should be as simple as saying, send the texture out. So PNG, Forger G GBB, which is green bottle blue. Um, we'll just call it Spider 002. Turn off vertex colors, send that out. Again, I'll just do it in the photo library just because it's quickest for us to have a look at. Go back here and there you go. So now you're getting good textures, um, not particularly highly, you know, not, not painted particularly well at this stage. You could do a lot more than that, but because it had good UVs, then you're in a good place. So these are much, much better UVs than we were seeing, first of all. So that is how you would start getting something in, paint on it and get it out. So that's the second part of the video covered. So let's take a look at something from inside of Forger that already has UVs, for example. And we'll do this as the last one. So let's just um, go up here and skip the save for the spider. And we'll bring this guy in. This is called Blue Head. So this is taken from the base head and sculpted. So all I've done is I've gone to Mesh. I've increased the subdivision level. So if I bring it back down, watch what happens. Now look at the blockiness there. And a good thing to look at is the wireframe, as you know by now. Look at the wireframe. And you can clearly see that that is vertex painting. You can see the blend across the polygon there from vertex or point to point. And again, I know I'm repeating myself, but if you're not sure what this is, spend the time to go back to last week and look at the vertex painting. Doesn't matter that it's in um, Nomad instead of Forger. This is all the same technology. So what I did was I just went upper resolution, upper resolution. So I'm much, much higher res now. But we know that this had UVs when we started it. So we're already in a good place. This is inside of um, inside of uh, Forger. And it, it basically, I'll go and show you where I got it from, um, just so that you can, it just proves it to you. So I just used this here. So bust. So, and all I did was I, I edited it and ended up with this guy. So this is a good, a good test for you, really. So you, you're using built-in uh, models, you're sculpting on top of them, you're painting them as well as uh, sculpting on them, and you're now getting out a good set of UVs. How do you get that good set of UVs out? So you're going to now basically bake that texture onto your UV map. And the way to do it, you already know, I've done it twice already, is just go to Export down here, PNG. Don't do eyes because we've not done the eyes for this one. Change it, we'll call it Blue Guy. 003 um, and hit export where well, we're going to save it we're going to save it in images and let's have a look what we got and what we got is that so there's a good set of UVs already on the model already in Forger 
and ready to go out. So what we've got is quite a few things to think about there. So you um, can't do this in Nomad yet. It doesn't give the ability to bake those UVs. You can't make UVs automated or any otherwise in, in, in Nomad yet. Uh, but here we are in Forger, the, the, the granddaddy of iPad sculpting apps, and it's already in there. So it's a great reason to make your decision about your iPad sculpting app because this is gives you a lot more flexibility. And I know it's going to change in Nomad. I'm absolutely confident it will, but it's already here in Forger. So this is why I've been quite reticent to say, which do you prefer, Nomad or Forger? Because... I'd want everyone to dig deep into both of these programs. It's good learning for anyone who wants to do this, and it only costs minimum, you know, it's, it's the cost of a meal out for getting both of them. So unless you're on an extreme budget, then you're best exploring all of this. But that's a great example of where you have to spend the time and start digging under the hood a little bit. So I hope that's been helpful, and that's two weeks on the row now we've done textures, so we might we might just do one more um, and then we'll do some specialists. And as you've probably noticed, we are going up in terms of the complexity of what we're making and showing. So we started off from the very basics. We, so we're bringing everyone with us and we're going to keep improving that level. So I hope you're enjoying this, this, this kind of texture explanation. Well, a massive thank you to everyone for joining the channel. We've got over 4,000 subscribers now, which is a huge success for us. We've only been going for a few months and we're really, really pleased with the progress. If you're liking this kind of stuff, please give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to comment down below. We are active and we do respond to comments quite a lot. Um, if there's anything you want us to focus on, keep telling us what that is and we'll try and include it as the weeks roll by. Don't forget to subscribe because that really matters and then we can, if you hit the notification bell, we can let you know as we upload these videos, which is a Wednesday and a Friday. Have a great week, everybody, and see you in the next video.